Hello and welcome, today I am going to explain Hidden, released in the year 2016. If you are new on the channel, subscribe. The movie begins with a family of three, who has been living inside a nuclear bunker for 301 days. The parents Ray, and Claire have always emphasized two key rules to their daughter Zoe, to always remain calm and never leave the shelter. Sadly the world above them has been deserted, due to a strange viral outbreak, and now they are the only survivors left, although it has been 301 days since the infection started. The ground is still extremely dangerous as the epidemic has given birth to dangerous creatures, called the breathers, who kill any humans on sight. The scene shifts to 301 days ago where it first began the family of three is living in a peaceful neighborhood, when suddenly they notice their neighbors start frantically packing to leave town. When asked what happened the neighbors did not answer, but swiftly drive away instead it turns out that a highly contagious, viral epidemic has hit their small town, named Kingsville. Scared of getting infected the inhabitants leave their homes, and drive through the highway to escape, however they are stopped midway by the CDC, who declare the area to be under quarantine, as the people step out of their cars, a pair of fighter jets drops multiple bombs, at them attacking the scared citizens, as they run away in fear, amidst the chaos Ray leads the family to a nearby elementary school, just as the fighter jets drop another bomb nearby, they find a hatch leading to the shelter and enter it. Back in the present Zoe wakes up one night, after having a nightmare of the breathers infiltrating their shelter. The mother quickly calms her down assuring that she is safe, as her dad Ray is out, keeping watch to ease her concerns. Claire takes Zoe to meet Ray, who is just returning from his watch shift. Ray further assures her that she's safe, and allows her to climb a ladder leading to the shelter's exit. When Zoe reaches the top she discovers that the opening is firmly locked, with an array of secured chains seeing this, a paranoid Zoe is finally convinced and returns to her parents, as the family heads for the shelter's pantry in there. Zoe alongside Claire conducts their morning ritual of carving a line on a wall, to signify a new day after doing this, Zoe counts the wall's markings, and realizes that they have spent a total of 301 days, alone in the shelter this realization saddens Zoe, as she has no friends her age, and is tired of staying in the gloomy shelter. A few minutes later Zoe sits to have breakfast, while Claire scans the pantry shelf for food. However they soon discover that the container is empty. On investigating Claire finds that a rat had entered the pantry and eaten, through most of the canned foods thus shortening, their already limited options the family also discovers that the rat managed to sneak into the shelter, through an opening other than the main barricaded hatch. They find a small air duct, but Ray reassures Zoe that the breathers wouldn't be able to fit through the duct, left with very few alternatives, and no remaining peach cans. The family settles for a plate of beans for breakfast, a disappointed Zoe sulks over the beans, and picks at her meal as she refrains from eating weary of their situation. Zoe rants about the subpar living conditions, and complains of being cooped up in the shelter. Ray understands her and consoles his distraught daughter, as he explains the importance of staying in the shelter, to hide from the breathers. Eventually Zoe sees reason and resumes eating, after Ray cracks a joke to brighten her mood. Later that night Claire joins Zoe in the other room, the duo plays Monopoly, but Zoe soon gets disinterested and bored. Of the game, seeing this Claire hands Zoe a periscope, to view the ground above looking through the device. Zoe sees the outside world, but is disappointed to find nothing, but a wasteland after the brief viewing. Zoe returns to play Monopoly with Claire at the dinner table. While playing Zoe spots the rat munching on one of the cans, and silently alerts her mom, eventually she also calls a sleeping Ray to the pantry, as the trio decides on how to kill the rat. After a long process Claire kills the rat before it escapes, but in the process the rodent knocks over one of the lamps, which explodes causing an overwhelming fire. Claire instantly brings a cloth, and tries to put off the flames. While Ray heads for the pump to get water, once again the faulty pump malfunctions, causing Ray to struggle with the lever, while Claire screams at him for help. Fortunately Ray gets it to work in time, and together the duo puts out the intense flames. When the fire had been fully quenched the family discovers, that the residual smoke had entered the air vents, and was escaping to the ground above. Seeing this the family figures, that the breathers could see the ash on the overhead ground, and decides to head to the surface to cover their tracks. After instructing Zoe not to leave the shelter, 
the couple heads for the surface to get rid of the residual ashes. While the couple clears the ground, Zoe watches them through the periscope. Right then she sees a strange figure lurking behind her parents, and assumes it to be a breather. Zoe screams to get her parents' attention, but the couple who are a long distance away doesn't hear her. Disregarding their instructions Zoe opens the hatch, and exits the shelter as she races to her parents to warn them of the lurking creature outside. Zoe finds no one and screams their names as she wanders around searching for them. Suddenly Claire pops up behind Zoe, and shuts her mouth to stop her incessant screams. When Claire releases Zoe, the little girl warns the couple of the strange figure she saw behind them. Learning this the trio immediately sprints to the opening hatch, and heads for the shelter just as they enter the underground facility. The family hears the loud footsteps of a breather plotting the overhead ground. To avoid being discovered, they all remain mute as they nervously listen to the footsteps on the roof. Just as the footsteps begin fading Zoe's doll makes a ruckus, after her rope accidentally gets caught in a nearby pipe. Horrified by the doll's sounds Ray swiftly grabs the toy, and destroys it to prevent it from attracting the creature. However it is too late as the breather had heard the doll, and violently hits the hatch to access the underground shelter. Seeing this Ray and Claire climb up the ladder, and successfully wedges the door, hence stopping the creature from breaking in. On hearing no further sounds Claire and Ray climb down the ladder, and reunite with Zoe as they all heave a sigh of relief. However this is short-lived as the sounds on the roof intensify, thus revealing that more of the creatures had arrived. The family tries to get another witch for the hatch, but before they can react the breathers destroy it. As the heavy metal falls to the ground seeing this, the trio sprints to another room in a quest to escape. To buy some time Claire hauls a lamp at the passageway, which causes a fire wick, she and Ray use a shelf to further obstruct the way, upon doing this they search for an alternate exit, and decide to go through the vents, with Ray's helps Claire passes the tight opening, and emerges outside reaching the overhead ground, Claire scans the area and fortunately spots no breathers, Claire quickly informs Ray, who on hearing this also helps Zoe, through the vents when, mother and daughter make it through, Ray tries to also climb up the airway, but can't seem to fit in a desperate attempt. Ray dislocates his shoulder and tries to fit in, however before he can make it outside. The breathers make it through and attack the injured man, causing him to fall back into the shelter. On looking down Claire and Zoe are horrified to see a splatter of blood, and eventually assume that Ray is dead after taking a moment to grieve him. The duo sprints through the dark roads and emerge on a highway, filled with a lineup of empty cars. Right then a helicopter with a bright headlight appears in the sky. Seeing the chopper the duo runs in the opposite direction. However they don't make it far before they get captured by a fired net. As they struggle to free themselves from the net the breathers appear from the shadows. And surround the duo as they step into the light. We learn that the breathers are in fact not monstrous creatures at all. But actually American soldiers wearing full protective face masks. In a flashback seen 301 days ago, we see Claire and the family right after the aerial attack in the bunker. Claire finds a cut on her hand and shows the rest of her family, as it turns black, signifying that she is infected. Seeing this the family realizes that the virus is airborne, and has now infected the entire town. Back to the present the armed men ask the duo to calm down as they whip out a syringe to test them for the virus. As the soldiers extract their blood they discover that the pair are indeed infected. Learning this the army men surround them with guns and prepare to fire, however before they pull the trigger. Ray who has transformed into a vampire-like creature with black veins and bloodshot eyes, attacks the soldiers exhibiting superhuman strength. He manages to kill a handful of them but ultimately gets taken down by the others who riddle him with bullets. Here we get a shocking revelation of the true nature of the virus. The family is actually the infected ones while the breathers are just normal people. The virus though contagious is not lethal, as the infected can live in almost normal life, as long as they do not lose control. Then we discover why Ray and Claire insisted on the rule to always stay calm at the start of the movie. Apparently the infected can lose control of their emotions, and turn into monsters however if they stay calm they remain like normal humans. Sadly this does not rule out the fact that they are infected, and that the army wants to kill them all. When the soldiers are done with Ray, they look back at the net but discover that Claire and Zoe have escaped. A few moments later Zoe hides in a car while Claire transforms into the same vampire-like state and easily knocks out three of the four remaining soldiers. However she is shot and injured by the last surviving soldier, just as the armed man is about to take the final shot. 
The transformed Zoe jumps at him and removes his face mask, exposing him to the virus. Zoe tries killing the soldier but is ultimately stopped by Claire. Eventually the duo leaves the man and walks down the highway. As they search for Ray, a few meters away the duo finds a dying Ray lying on the floor, and tearfully say their final goodbyes. Shortly after Claire and Zoe spot a chopper approaching, and on seeing this, run into an underground tunnel hidden under a pile of destroyed wood. As the pair heads inside the tunnel they run into Joey, the son of their next door neighbors who they last saw a year ago. At the start of the outbreak the little boy leads them to a hatch, and on opening it reveals a sewer system inside. Claire and Zoe discover that there are other infected survivors dot who have been living in the Kingsville sewers for months, seeing, this mother and daughter are relieved to have other people like them. Zoe climbs down the hatch to join the welcoming group, with Claire following shortly after the movie ends, as Claire stares into the sun with bloodshot eyes before ultimately shutting the hatch. The movie ends here. Thanks for watching, and do not forget to subscribe.